about that, huh? No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Connor, two days ago, you guys had a 3% chance of making the playoffs. You guys had your backs against the wall. You needed five different things had to go right, including getting two wins in one weekend. And you guys did it. What does that say about this group? I just, I think it just shows the uh, resilience and, you know, I think our mentality all season has just been no quit. And, you know, obviously lacrosse is a game of runs, whether that's a game or I guess a season, right? We had some streaks of winning, we had some streaks of losing. So, you know, we just knew we had to stick with the process and control what we could control. Um, and, you know, that led into this weekend. We knew, you know, we can't control those other games. We could hope what the outcome would be. And, you know, we were lucky that it was those outcomes, but we knew, you know, we had to get two wins to be able to make it. So just, you know, give our best effort each night. Take us through the process of what you guys went through as a team from the time that you left Georgia with the win to the time face-off tonight. What did you guys do to rehab your bodies and get yourself ready to make sure that you guys were ready to go here at 3 o'clock? Yeah, I mean, this is a uh, top-notch orga organization. You know, I think they, they treat us, you know, great. And uh, we just – we flew in Saturday morning after the game. We landed, um, and then we had a couple hours off where we could grab lunch. We had to come here. Um, they had chiropractors, massage therapists, um, you know, trainers. Obviously, we were all getting stretched out, work done, um, and then we had a little light helmets and gloves, just kind of to get the legs flowing and moving, just so we're not sitting around all day. And credit to our coaching staff, it was you know a really good idea. I think a lot of us felt a lot better, you know, after that. And um, yeah, and then we just had some dinner. We were watching some of the games here, watching them in the hotel, and uh, you know, just hoping for the results. And you know, like I said, we're lucky to have those results. Um, you know, but sometimes you have to be lucky to be good. So um, you know, we'll take it. What was it like when you guys are, are watching Albany win, and you're watching Toronto win, and realizing, okay, this is going to come down to a win and we're in situation? Yeah, I think you know, if you ask anyone, it's right. If if you have control of it, right? If it's a game, it's not as stressful because you know it's on you, right? Or it's, you know, on us as a team where, you know, those games, it's really nerve wracking because you have no control over it, right? You're kind of just hoping each game that it's going to go the way it needs to. And, you know, granted the three teams we needed to win are the top three teams in the league right now. Um, so, you know, we knew that was, you know, uh, kind of lucky too. But, uh, you know, I think we just, like I said, we were just focusing on ourselves and, we were watching those, hoping just that we were going to get this opportunity today, um, and we did, and we made the most of it, so we're happy. You had four goals and four assists Friday night. You had seven goals, one assist. Today, 15 points in a make or break. Your season is on the line. How was your game this weekend, the fact that you knew all the pressure was going to be on you? You're the number one option on this offense, and you delivered both times. Yeah, you know, I think it's just offensively, you know, we, we – we really focus on just playing as a unit, playing as one, and you know, obviously, the weight's on all of our shoulders. So, you know, for me personally, I'm just happy this weekend. I kind of came in these past couple of weeks. I was, uh, you know, a little banged up a little bit, to be honest, and um, just dealing with a couple minor things. And you know, this weekend I felt great, and I knew, uh, you know, I think we all knew what was at hand. So, um, you know, we have a lot of great players on this team who all stepped up. But at, at the end of the day. You know, obviously, like we said, right, we could only control what we could control. And I knew for me, I could control what I could, I could control. And that's, you know, effort, attitude, and just trying to go out there and be the best version of myself. So, uh, you know, that's what I try to do. And like I said, we had, like Smith, well, Smitty stepped up big last game. I think all the guys on offense contributed this weekend and, and uh, you know, played great. And that's what we need to do to keep winning. We talked about your MVP chances a couple months ago. I told you I was going to start with that campaign. You're finishing the season number two in goals. Number four in points, your 120 points this year is 10th best ever single season. You have 106, over 160 loose balls, which is the most by any forward in the history of the league. Should you be in consideration for the MVP? Like, what, what's your what's your campaign? <laughs> you know, it's always a tough question, right? Like, I mean, I think everyone to be at this level, you got to be a confident player, and you know, I think a lot of the times. A lot of those stats get overlooked, right? And um, especially, you know, the loose balls part of it. I think, you know, you look at some of that. I think they, a lot of the people, and think it's more of a defensive stat. And you know, I think one of the things for me too is those are all in the offensive zone, right? I'm not out there on faceoffs, right? I'm not doing, you know, and those are sometimes are some easier ground balls that some people get. So, you know, for me, it's just, 
that doesn't matter, you know. I just want us to win a championship and get a ring, and, you know, that, that's all the focus is. But, um, yeah, just control what I could control. Very diplomatic answer. We love it. <laughs> you got a chance to play against one of your childhood heroes, Joe Reseteritz. What's it like to play against Joe? You guys grew up about 20 miles apart. You followed him and his brother to Albany. You guys wore the same numbers. What was it like being on the same field with him? <laughs> I, I, I love Joey Rez, his brother too, Frank. It's, you know, great family, obviously very – talented lacrosse family but you know also they're the best people and that's the best part about them is just the people they are um you know I feel like they're family to me almost every time I see them you know it's it's not a handshake it's a hug so uh you know I think just in in those playing against him you know obviously it's always tough suiting up against him and like I said I root for him when he's playing against other teams I, I love to see him do well because he's you know like I said a stand-up guy and a great player you know, but I was hoping tonight he wasn't going to do too well. So, <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, obviously our defense did a great job. But yeah, he's a phenomenal player, and you know, I've I've looked up to him for a while. So, you know, it was really cool to be out there with him. What does it mean to you that you two are the only two American-born players in the history of this league with back-to-back 100-point seasons? Yeah, I mean, you know, this league is uh is not an easy league by any means, and uh, you know, it's. Just to be in the conversation with him is, you know, an honor, really. And, uh, you know, I think the career he's put together, you know, this year he had another great season. I think he came close to 100 again, or maybe he did break 100. Um, but I think just it's a testament to how good of a player he is. And like I said, to be in a conversation with him is, is a true honor. You know, uh, points aside, anything aside, you know, I'd love to be compared to him as a player and as a person. So, uh, you know, I think, I think the world of him. It's the biggest game of the year for you guys today. You had the biggest crowd of the season. What can you say about the fans of Rochester and how they supported you guys through all the ups and downs this year? Man, I think I think we got a, a really, really, really good fan base. I think, you know, solely, you know, I think they were a big part of why we won today, right? They got loud. It was real loud in there, and I think that helps us, right? It gets us pumped up and keeps the, the runs, you know, going longer, and I think it kind of deflated Philly today. And, you know, I think for them to show out like they did today after, the, you know, the ups and downs we had this season, you know, I, a lot of those fans could have tossed in the towel, right, and not showed up when we were in our, in our ruts. But for them to come each night and give us that support, whether we win or lose, I mean, it's unbelievable. And, you know, I can't thank them enough because they're really a huge part of why we're in the playoffs, you know, and – and I'm just hoping, obviously, we can win this this game next weekend and then get in front of them again. Well, probably I saw that your wife and your son were out, out in the hallway. Does, does Finn get to go to the playoffs too? <laughs> I don't know if he's going to make it over the border. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's going to be a game time decision. It is a day game, so he might be there. Um, he has he good luck, so <laughs> we so might need to get him there. Two and this year? No, yeah, well, he was at the Halifax game, and you know, obviously we lost that one at home, but. Uh, but he was here tonight, and it was a day game, so we might have to keep the mojo going. <laughs> I guess we can hear the commotion from out here. How much did it mean to you guys to clinch this uh, playoff run from the last day? Man, I can't even put it into words. You know, I think you look at every season, right, and it's not the same team the next year, right? Whether someone leaves, someone retires, it's – and I think we have a really, really good group. This is, you know, a team that – we love playing with each other. I think you ask the coaches, we're all best friends in there. We're all really close. And just to know that we have another week together, I think that's what you're hearing in there is, you know, that's what we're fighting for. Another week together, another week, you know, and, and you keep adding those up and then you get a championship, right? So, um, yeah, it's it's an unbelievable feeling to be in the playoffs. But, you know, at the same time, you can't be satisfied with that, right? We're, that was that was one of our goals is to make the playoffs. But, you know, the end goal is to win a championship. So, we we got the first one done. Now we got to keep moving. You spoke on the ebbs and flows of the season. Not too long ago, you guys dropped four in a row. What does it say about the everyone in that locker room that you guys were able to rally this weekend to get into the postseason? Yeah, I mean, we could have you know tossed in the towel. I think it just goes along the lines of you know I feel like the motto of this season is just no quit. You know, I think we saw it early in the season when we had some comeback wins early in the season. Um, you know, like you said, we went in a little bit of a losing streak. Um, but, you know, honestly, I think this could benefit us is going through those, right? You learn from those, op you learn from those games. Um, but not only that, last year, you know, we started out real hot and we kind of fizzled out at the end of the year where, you know, right now we're clicking at the right time, right, the weekend before the playoffs. So, you know, I think we could use this momentum, you know, and hopefully bring it into next weekend. How do you take that momentum that you had these last two games and have it go into the postseason against Toronto? 
Yeah, I mean, I think confidence is a huge thing in this league for every player, for every team, right? And, and you know, coming off these two wins, you know, we're going to take with what we did well and keep doing that. And obviously there's things to work on, right? I, I don't think any game's perfect. Um, but, you know, obviously we're going to take these wins and this confidence and, and bring it into the next weekend and, you know, throw a couple tweaks in here, stuff stuff we could work on. But it's it's about us, right? And I think you ask any team, it's it's about your own yourselves, right? And that you're not worried about the the team you're playing next weekend. Obviously, you scout them and and know what their tendencies are. But I think if you ask anyone in our locker room, we want to dictate the pace and dictate you know offensively and defensively. So we're just focusing on us and hopefully keeping this confidence going. What do you think of the quarterfinal round? How it's just that one game in comparison to the round after when it is that best of three. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely makes things interesting, right? Because you know. It's just one, like you said, it's just one game, right? So um, we know we have to come prepared next weekend. Obviously, it's the number one team in the league right now, and they're number one for a reason. Um, but, you know, like like you said, right, it's one game. we got to go in there just worried about not only just one game, but just one shift at a time, right? One, one shift at a time, one loose ball, one pass, pick, whatever it is. It's just we, we want to stack those one thing at a time, and, and hopefully it gets us going in the right direction to get a win.